maintain the cause. It's more than just a banner we put up or a saying that's catchy. There was a an elderly man in the church I was a part of growing up in, in Oklahoma, and uh, he, he was a simple fella, and he would wear this baseball cap, and he had the letters CMS written across his baseball cap. And it would just tickle him to death if you would walk up to him and ask him, what does that stand for? And he would grin and say real loud, Cause Mama says. Cause Mama says. And I was thinking about that today as I chuckled and remembered that, how that mothers, they don't like to give a two-minute explanation. When they tell the daughter or the son to do something, there's always the questions. And, and sometimes, well, that rebellion can rise up. But it's important that children understand that it's simply because cause mama says. Amen? I believe it would be in order if we had a hat that said CJS. Cause Jesus says. Amen? To be faithful, to be committed to the cause in which he's called us to reach this world. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. It is said, if you don't believe that, read a part of Proverbs and you will understand there was great wisdom. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, before mentioning and maintaining the cause, Solomon, he laid a groundwork for success in life. And it applies here in 2013. He was speaking to the people of God. Chapter 6 and verse 1, Then said Solomon, the Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. It doesn't matter how dark this world is. God is there. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. Amen. Solomon said, I have built a house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling forever. Amen. The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. He's in the thick darkness of this city. He's in the thick darkness of this world. Amen. He said, I have built a house. And Solomon went on to say, verses 12 through 42, I won't take the time to read all of the scriptures, but there is this prayer of dedication. And the theme, I believe, is there's three important points that I picked up as I read this yesterday and today. Number one is when the people of God sin, it was the prayer of Solomon that they would be forgiven. Praise God. That God would forgive their sin. Number two, when strangers would come, in verse 32, that if they came to this house, that God would answer their prayer. So the people of God and the strangers that would come into the house. Verse 34, number 3, And if thy people would war against the enemy, and that they would pray in this house, that God, you would hear their prayer and maintain their cause. Amen. I like that tonight. Amen. I have an understanding that it's God that needs to be involved in my life to maintain my cause. It's so easy to become distracted in this life. So many things in this world that's pulling at our young people and our children and marriages, church, more than ever before. We need to maintain the cause. Amen. We need to keep fighting the good fight of faith with an understanding that Jesus is coming soon for a church that maintains the cause. Praise God. At the end of Solomon's prayer, chapter 7 and verse 1 says that the fire, that it literally fell from heaven. You talk about a powerful prayer. When the fire falls from heaven, there's power in your prayer. The Bible says that it consumed the sacrifices. That the glory of God filled the house. That the priests could not even enter in because of the thickness of God's glory. Amen? In spite of the darkness of this world, I believe more than ever before if a church will be given to prayer and fasting, that the glory of the Lord can fill the temple, that the fire can fall, can fall from heaven, amen, that it can change lives, that it can give direction, that it can loose the shackles and the bondage of this world. We will simply understand that we are to maintain the cause. Solomon finished the house of the Lord, chapter 7 and verse 11. And in his own house, I love this, he prosperously affected. He prosperously affected. If we will keep God number one in our lives, 
if we will keep coming to the house of God, amen, when the flesh says, I just want to stay home and lay on the couch and drink coffee and eat chocolate-covered donuts, amen, if we will just have a made-up mind, amen, I don't care what other people of the world are doing on a Sunday night, I'm going to the house of God where the fire is falling, amen, if we will get a hold of this concept tonight, I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that God will prosperously affect your life. Does anybody believe that tonight? Praise God. Let's give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah for the prosperity that he gives. Amen. Helping us to be effective in reaching this city. Hallelujah. Praise God. We must finish what we start. It takes good old fashioned commitment. Being committed to the cause. Being committed to prayer meeting when we don't feel like going. Amen. I'm going. I'm committed to the cause. Praise God. Finishing what God has started in our life. I love Philippians 1 and 6 that says, He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a call and He's placed in your heart. Amen. You may have stepped away from it just for a season, but that which God has started in your life, in your heart, church, hear me tonight. If you will just maintain your course, if you will just maintain the cause, there's no telling what God can do in your life. Praise God. It was David as he faced Goliath. He said, is there not a cause facing a giant, facing this Goliath? Goliath, David said it. Amen. It was David that had rushed to the scene. It was David that had heard his brothers talking down to him. You've come as a delivery boy. You've got cheese and you've got bread. But David, aren't you supposed to be back home taking care of the sheep? You've left them alone and his brothers literally said you've got pride and wrong motives in your heart. You've just come to watch the fight. We know that you're ornery. We know that you need to go back home. Let me give you the Greek for what they were saying. You have come as an irresponsible little brat. You don't belong here. You belong back home. I know you want to see the fight, but my little brother, it's time for you to go back home. And David, he said, what have I now done? Is there, is there not a cause? Is there not anybody in the land of Israel that would stand up to this giant and say, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to fight? From the conversation with brothers that disrespected him, it was David. That then, the Bible says, turn from them and started talking to a king that had the same disrespect. You're just a young man. You're just a young person with, with peach fuzz on your face. You're facing a man of war. Do you hear me, David? And I love the reaction, Brother Poland, of David. David, the Bible says, he answered the king with his testimony. He didn't start making excuses. He didn't start saying how many push-ups he was doing or how fast he could run a hundred-yard dash. He didn't start flexing his muscles. The Bible says that it was David that started talking about a testimony. Hear me tonight, King. Let me tell you about a time a lion came. Let me tell you about a time that a bear came against the sheep and, and the glory of the Lord fell upon me. I believe it's important tonight that when the enemy comes knocking and he gets in your face, the best response that you can have is to start talking about your testimony and what God has done in your life. Woo! Don't ever stop about talking about the victories and the testimonies in your life. Can I get a witness in the house tonight? David spoke of his testimony. Do you remember the victory back in 1997? Do you remember the time that God reached down and gave you that miracle back in 2011? It's important that we keep talking about it. Amen? It's important that when the enemy comes around that we start talking about the lion and the bear and the victory that comes. Maintain your cause, church. Talk about your testimony. David talked about deliverance. And healing and salvation. David talked about a cause in his life. You know, it's not easy when family and friends start questioning your cause and your calling. You've come to fight 
And the adrenaline is rushing. Isn't it amazing how somebody can rush in and sock you in the stomach? And take the air out of you spiritually. And if you listen to it long enough, the enemy, as he whispers into your ear, it can bring destruction and confusion and discouragement. When it's said you're not able to fight and overcome, how do you react to that? I believe it's very important tonight that we would remember that it's God that's still on our side. That it is the Lord that helps us to maintain the cause. Amen. Through prayer and fasting in the word of God. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it. Could we give the Lord some praise here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maintain the cause. Praise God. It was David that simply he maintained his course. He heard the disrespect. He heard the dishonor. But there was a date with destiny in his life. I didn't come to this battlefield just bringing a bunch of shredded cheddar cheese in my pockets. I didn't come just to bring a bunch of sourdough bread to my brothers that are making fun of me. But David had an understanding. I have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to maintain my cause. God is on my side. Praise God. He had an understanding that there was no word. There was no challenge. There was no discouragement that would stop him from fulfilling his purpose. I'm on a mission. I have a cause. God is on my side. And you know what? That's all that really matters. My, my brothers, they may be talking trash, so to speak. Whew. But I'm maintaining the cause in my life. Hallelujah. Whatever the mission, church, hear me tonight. Whatever the calling is that God has given you. Whatever the vision is and the purpose there will always be the voice of the enemy that says you don't belong here at the Life Center. You don't matter. You're not worthy. You're not able to fight against the giant. Who are you? You little irresponsible brat. That's the way the devil talks to the children of God. Amen? But tonight I want to remind you to stand up like David and say, you know what, I don't care what you're saying or what you're doing, family, friend, or enemy. I'm going to maintain the cause. I'm going to keep swinging. Amen. I've got a battle to win. The help of the Lord. Keep talking about your testimony. Woo! Keep saying, there is a cause in my life. Amen. Because of a cause. There's another message in itself because of a cause I'm going to keep swinging and fighting and win this fight that I'm in David said is there not a cause 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 is there not a cause tonight it was David that said to the Philistine thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Praise God. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Amen. I love what he says in verse 47. The battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. I don't care how big the stronghold is that we're fighting in the spiritual realm. If we will maintain our cause, amen, if we will pick up the weapons that God has given us, amen, if we will maintain the cause, there's a great revival that's coming, amen. There's a great harvest that's coming in this city if we will just maintain the cause that God has led us to. If you believe what I'm preaching, would you lift your hands and say, God, help me to maintain the cause in my life. Hallelujah. Maintain the cause. Praise God. Praise God. Maintain the cause. There are moments in our life that I believe the Lord needs to cleanse us and wash us. Remember the prayer of Solomon. Lord, if you would just forgive your people. If you would just... Forgive them, Lord. Lord, as they pray unto you, it's my prayer tonight that you would cleanse them. That you would wash them. 
It's important tonight that we allow God to finish the course in our lives. That we have an understanding that it's God that needs to cleanse us and to wash us from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Amen? It's spiritual tide that we need in our hearts, in our minds. Heard a good acronym for dirt this week. Dirt stands for disobedience. I is for ignorance. R is for rebellion. And T is for tongue. Amen. Sometimes we got to get up off of the ground. Amen. If you're going to stay clean, you've got to get back up and dust yourself off and say, you know what? Enough of that dirt in my life. There's not room for disobedience. There's no room for ignorance. Amen. There's no room for rebellion and this tongue. God help us to maintain the cause and to get back up and to fight the good fight of faith. Woo! You cannot maintain a healthy vision and purpose with dirt in your heart and dust in your eyes. It's the American I'm free mentality that has spread in mega churches across this nation and religious circles that promotes Christianity as an easy believism. Whatever happened to the John the Baptist message of repentance? Repent! Prepare in the way of the Lord. Whatever happened to a spirit of conviction that sweeps across the church where people are crying, amen, and repenting to the one true God. I believe that we've got to get back to that place, that the prayers of Solomon, that the prayers of this pastor, that the prayers of your household would be answered. God, help us to repent so that we can maintain the cause that you've led us to fulfill fervent prayer that melts the strongholds of sin in our lives. We need conviction in our hearts. Don't ever get away from this altar. Don't ever get away from the prayer meetings that we're promoting and, and given in this church. Amen? If you're going to maintain the cause, if you're going to keep the dirt out of your life, keep coming back to an altar of forgiveness, church. Forgive me, Lord. I'm a sinner. I need the cross more than ever before. I need the blood of Jesus like never before. As Solomon prayed it, as David fulfilled it, amen, God help us to maintain the cause in our lives. Would you lift your hand with me right now and ask God to do that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm closing up. You can stand tonight. Main Maintain the cause. He came to the giant with the cause in the name of the Lord. Pastor, why do we need to maintain our cause? What's it all about? My friend, it's all about eternity. It's all about eternal things. It's about making it to heaven. And it's about missing hell. It's keeping our focus it's keeping our priorities in line with Jesus Christ. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus. Keep your focus, church. Keep bringing your family to church so that they can experience the forgiveness that comes from a loving Savior that wants you to make it to the other side. That wants you to maintain the cause. No matter how thick the darkness is, the Lord said there's a church. There's a habitation. It was in that moment, in that place, in that time that a church was established in the wilderness. But at this moment in time, there's a church that's been established in this city. Is it a house of habitation? Is it a place where people can walk in and feel the presence of the Lord and have an understanding? You know what? There's something different about this church. The fire is still falling. I pray tonight that there will be services in the future where the glory of the Lord is so thick that we will bow. Read it. Second Chronicles chapter 7. The Bible says that their only reaction they had was that they bowed before the glory and the presence of God as the prayers of Solomon was answered 
was God simply saying, I will maintain your cause. I will keep pouring out the fire from heaven. I will keep forgiving those that have sinned. If you will come before me with a right heart and a right spirit. My friend, this message is for all of us tonight. Maintain the cause. Don't turn back. Don't go back. Keep your hand on the plow. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep worshiping. Keep coming back to the life center. Maintain the cause. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here tonight that wants to come forward and lift their hands and say, God, it's eternal things that matter to me. and I want you to help me to maintain the cause of my life. Maintain once again is to keep up. If you're going to keep up with the church, you better keep praying. Praise God. If you're going to maintain and carry on, if you're going to preserve one's barren, you've got to keep coming to the altar. If that cause is going to stay in your heart, there has to be a reason. There has to be a motive. There has to be a power agent that affects the result. God, would you help us to maintain the cause? There's people to reach. There's more families to teach Bible studies to. There's more prayer meetings to attend. Will you be willing to maintain the cause in your life? It's a step of faith tonight by coming forward and joining the rest of us here in the front and saying, God, here's my life. Forgive me. Wash me before the fire falls. Church, there's some forgiveness that has to take place. There's some repentance that has to be given to the Lord. Before God answers our prayers and the revival comes, there's a cleansing. There's a washing at the fountain. Woo! At the cross. Hallelujah. God, help us tonight to maintain the cause that you've given us. Let's seek the Lord tonight. Let's cry out to Jesus.